welcome to an introduction to qualitative methods. The aim of this session is to enhance your understanding of the process of qualitative research. The objectives of the, se of the session are that you will start to consider a range of approaches to qualitative research that can be applied to a, a variety of research situations. You will start to be able to select, apply and critically appraise applied research techniques that can be used in qualitative studies. You will start to be able to critically appraise the purpose, process and products of research activity. You will start to have an increased ability to critically evaluate current research and to evaluate research methods used by others and you will start to critically reflect on your developing competence as a researcher and the implications for the development of this part of your role. So how does this session fit in with the other sessions that you may be studying online as part of this module? You may have studied using the quantitative design session and you may want to follow this session with the analysis, presentation, interpretation and rigour in qualitative research session. This session will look at thematic and content analysis. We will start this session thinking about the philosophy and foundations of qualitative research. So some questions to get you started. Is what is observable the only reality? Look at this picture. Whose reality is captured in the painting? Is it the swimmer's reality, the bystander's reality or the artist's reality? You'll probably come across the word ontology in your reading on qualitative research. This means the nature of reality. Another question to consider in relationship to qualitative research is whether reality is shaped by social, political, cultural, economic and gender values. And finally, to what extent is reality co-created by the researcher and those studied as part of the research? Take a few moments to write down your responses to these questions. As you read accounts of qualitative studies, Consider how the researcher has taken into account these issues in the way they have carried out their study. Qualitative research is often about the recognition of patterns in phenomena, in contrast with quantitative methods, which are about the explication of facts that will be controllable and generalisable. Different approaches to qualitative research are phenomenology, grounded theory, ethnography, discourse analysis, and action research, although action research can use quantitative and qualitative methods. For any type of study, the question that needs answering will drive the type of research selected. If you're going to choose a qualitative approach for your study, it's likely that the study will be based on a belief in multiple realities, a commitment to the participant's viewpoint that the inquiry will be structured so that it limits the disruption of the natural context. The study will acknowledge the participation of the researcher in the research process and the data collected and interpreted will be reported in a literary style. A few other points to be considered are should the literature review be carried out before, during or after the data collection and analysis? To what extent should your beliefs, views and prior experiences influence the study? Should these be an integral part of the study or bracketed out of the study? How will you choose the setting of your study? How will you select the participants? Will you use purposive sampling, theoretical sampling, snowball sampling for example? And what about saturation? How will you decide when to stop data collection? When planning a study or reviewing a study, it's important to consider the most appropriate method for generating data and managing the data that's collected. Take a few moments to consider the benefits, challenges and limitations of each of these methods. Interviews, focus groups, written narratives, participant observation, 
field notes which are made during data collection, and memos that are written during data analysis. I will now provide a very brief overview of some different research approaches, some different methodologies. Phenomenology, grounded theory, ethnography, action research and discourse analysis. So first of all, let's try phenomenology. Sometimes phenomenology is described as a study of the lived experience. However, it's a little more than this. Phenomenology is the study of essences, the essence of the lived experience. Phenomenology is described as a philosophy sometimes and a methodology at others. Phenomenology is about getting a direct description of experience as it is, without taking account of its psychological origin and causal explanations. Phenomenology is an inductive methodology and a descriptive methodology. It's about making things whose meaning seems clear, meaningless for a while during the study, and then discovering what they mean. As we've just looked at, phenomenology is more than just the study of the lived experience. It's about the lived experience that gives meaning to each individual's perception of the particular phenomena. If you look at the second explanation of phenomenology, you can see some very similar words being used that phenomenology is a rigorous, critical, systematic investigation of a phenomena to explicate the structure or essence of the lived experience of that phenomena in the search for unity of meaning, which is the identification of the essences of a phenomena and its accurate description through the everyday lived experience. Some names that you may come across in your additional reading on phenomenology are Brentano, Husserl, Heidegger, Marcel, Jean-Paul Sartre and Merleau-Ponty. And as you read about phenomenology, you'll see the historical development of this methodology, of this philosophy. Some terms that you may come across in your additional reading on phenomenology are essences, which we've already been talking about. A couple of other terms that you may come across are phenomenological reduction and intuiting, and we'll look at what these mean. Phenomenological reduction is a strategy that the researcher will engage in in order to be free from concrete presuppositions. This involves the suspension of beliefs, assumptions, biases about the phenomena, and the term bracketing is sometimes used for this. To what extent do you feel that this can really be achieved? Intuiting is another term that's used in phenomenology to refer to the process that the researcher engages in when they wonder about the phenomena in relationship to the various descriptions generated through the research. And returning to the term essences, essences in phenomenology are thought of as the element related to the true meaning of something that is. It's the basic unit of common understanding of any phenomena. In a study of patients' experiences of living with rheumatoid arthritis, the essences identified in this study were grieving while growing, persuading self and others of rheumatoid arthritis authenticity, of confronting negative feelings, of navigating the healthcare system, and masterminding new life ways. You're likely to come across different interpretations of phenomenology as a philosophy and methodology. Calaisi, Georgie, Patterson and Zederad, Van Kam, Van Manen and Struber are some of the names that you're likely to come across. You're likely to come across two different approaches to phenomenology generally, descriptive phenomenology and interpretive hermeneutic phenomenology. Now let's look at data generation and phenomenology. Phenomenology is usually undertaken with a purposive sample. The methods of collecting data are likely to be open-ended questions with data collected through tape recording, verbatim transcriptions and researchers' handwritten notes. There may be follow-up interviews if necessary. 
Also, the participants could be asked to write an exhaustive description of the phenomena. Data is collected and sat until saturation, which means no new themes of essences are being gained from the participants. Usually in phenomenology, the re review of the literature occurs after data analysis. In the studies carried out using phenomenology, it's often the case where the transcripts are returned to the participants to check for the trustworthiness and authenticity of the data that's being collected. And the researcher would also be responsible for the audit trail of how the data was interpreted. And this would be evident through the memos that the researcher had made whilst engaging in data analysis and interpretation. So that was our very brief exploration of phenomenology. Now let's look at grounded theory. Grounded theory as a methodology is used to explore social processes. The purpose of grounded theory is to develop a theory about dominant social processes rather than to describe a particular phenomenon. It may be that grounded theory is being used to modify an existing theory. In grounded theory, explanations are derived that are grounded in empirical data. And grounded theory is based on symbolic interactionist perspective of human behaviour. The image there of the soldier returning, I've put there because I went to a lecture by Juliet Corbin and the data that we looked at from one of her studies, that, that was the focus um, of her study that she was exploring using grounded theory. Some names that you might come across in your reading on grounded theory are Glazer and Strauss, Corbin and Strauss and Sharma. Each of these would have a different interpretation on the methodology of grounded theory. When carrying out a study using grounded theory, sampling is guided by concepts and constructs which have significance for the developing theory. Sampling proceeds until the categories, their properties and dimensions are well established. This is called theoretical sampling until saturation. Data collection in grounded theory is usually carried out using methods such as interviews, observation, use of documentary data and visual data. A couple of phrases that you might come across in your reading on grounded theory are theoretical sensitivity and constant comparison. Theoretical sensitivity refers to the way in which the researcher becomes aware of the important concepts that arise from the data. This is an iterative process. Constant comparison is another iterative process. In constant comparison, the researcher compares the qualitative information and related data in the literature so that the properties and dimensions of the categories can be produced, patterns can be established, and this will lead to the formulation of theory. Key features of grounded theory are the interaction that occurs during data collection and analysis. These processes don't happen sequentially, they happen in an iterative cycle, so that data collection and anal analysis are occurring at the same time and informing the next section of data collection and, and analysis. Theoretical sampling we've looked at and theoretical sensitivity we've also discussed. We've also looked at how categories and theory saturation are important features of grounded theory. When a researcher is carrying out a study using grounded theory, the researcher will keep field notes and memos, and the researcher will use constant comparative analysis as they go through the process of data collection and data analysis. Using this approach, the research becomes progressively focused on particular issues that are, import that are important for developing the theoretical ideas. Another methodology that we'll take a whistle-stop look at is ethnography. Ethnography is a research approach that's used in anthropology and social sciences to describe and explore a culture, subculture or social group in its natural setting. In ethnography, the researcher becomes a cultural stranger. 
and ethnography offers insight rather than generalizable findings or explanations. Characteristics of studies carried out using ethnography are that the researcher is an instrument of the research, data is collected during field work, and there's a cyclical nature of data collection and analysis. In ethnography, the focus is on culture and the researcher engages in cultural immersion. One thing for the researcher to be aware of using this methodology is the tension between being the researcher and also becoming a cultural member. This requires reflexivity, that the researcher takes time to be aware of the impact that they have on the research. Some names that you might come across in your reading on ethnography are Margaret Mead, Malinowski, Geertz and the Chicago School of Sociology. As with the other methodologies that we've looked at in this session, there are different types of ethnography, holistic ethnographic interpretation, semiotic interpretation or a behaviourist approach. Ethnography explores the everyday life of a group, culture or subculture. It involves exploring the thoughts, values, norms and behaviours of members and the meaning they give to their experience. Ethnography can involve taking the emic or the etic perspective. Previous ethnography has focused on shared values, language and behaviour, but more recent ethnographic studies are now focusing on different views dependent on position, hierarchy and power, and how these are context specific. So how would you carry out an ethnographic study? You'd start with a broad research question. You'd engage in your field work using participant observation of the culture. This would be the main source of data. Your data would be descriptive, it could be focused, and they could become selective. You would be immersed in the culture, making field notes of everything that you see and hear. On the basis of your observations, you would then interview participants of particular interest who you would think are the key informants those who have particular, no particular knowledge of the group that's being studied. You may also choose to look at cultural documents and artefacts. The data that you collect would be described in rich, thick terms. There's a cyclical nature to ethnographic studies and this includes the data collection and data analysis. An ethnography is actually the product of the methodology. It's a completed description and analysis of the group that has been studied. However, ethnography is often used to describe the process of the study and the product. Okay, two research methodologies to go and really just two slides to look at these. For each of these methodologies, you'll find handbooks that are really informative and there are handbooks just on qualitative methods and methodologies. So I'll direct you to those. For action research, it's important to realise this is really a very cyclical process that involves the exploration, the use of an intervention and evaluation of a change. It can involve quantitative and qualitative methods, although most of the studies I've read really use qualitative methods. In action research, it's very much a collaboration between researchers and participants. Okay, so our final methodology in this session, we'll look at discourse analysis. Discourse analysis involves the analysis of text and language. It focuses on the construction of text within a context. Discourse analysis uses verbatim transcripts and focuses on the way in which social reality is constructed in interaction and action. In discourse analysis, the researcher collects and reviews the data before arriving at theories and general principles, and so this is an inductivist approach. Discourse analysis is similar to conversational analysis. We're coming to the end of this session, so let's review your understanding of qualitative research. Through this research, you've started to consider a range of approaches to qualitative research that can be applied to a variety of research situations. 
After engaging in additional reading, you should be able to select, apply and critically appraise applied research techniques that can be used in qualitative studies. You should be able to critically appraise the purpose, process and products of research activity. You should have an increased ability to critically evaluate current research and to evaluate research methods used by others. And you should be starting to critically reflect on your developing competence as a researcher and implications for the development of this part of your role. So what next? Through further reading, you'll be able to identify the most appropriate methodology and methods for your research study. When reading accounts of research studies, you should now be better able to appraise the appropriateness of the methodology and methods used. Here you'll find some suggested additional reading that you can engage in to further broaden your understanding of qualitative research methodologies.